Everybody, I make it two o'clock, so we'll make a start. Uh, welcome all to our March Amenities Committee meeting. I think we've pretty much got a full house other than uh, Carla. So Carly, thank, you, yes. thank you all for coming. Um, welcome to uh, Susie Dowling, who I think is testing all of the committees to see which one she wants to join. So be on best behaviour, everyone. But no, you're very welcome to, to sit in and listen, uh, Susie, and contribute if you have anything to contribute. Uh, oh, got an extra one. Oh, hello. Uh, so we'll start with 783. Are there any declarations of any disclosable pecuniary interests, please? None. If anyone notes one during the meeting, do shout. 784, any apologies for absence? No, I've had none, thank you. None. So we're only missing Carla, she might uh, turn up late. Uh, we'll make a note of that. 785, uh, minutes from our... Um, uh, my agenda says January, but I think it's actually the February meeting. It is the February meeting. It is the February it's meeting. The second of February. Yeah. That's quite all right. We all missed it. Uh, the minutes are, however, February's minutes. So are you all content with the minutes, please? Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to juggle the agenda around slightly and take action points and updates um, at the end of the agenda purely because so many of the actions are covered under the other agenda items. Um, so I'll take them at the end and we'll use it as a bit of a sort of checking uh, process to make sure we've covered everything. Uh, so we'll take them at the end. Uh, moving on to health and safety, 787, to receive feedback on any matters requiring the attention of the committee. Uh, start with you, uh, Alan, anything particular under health and safety? No. Yes, Chris, anything you wanted to mention? Yeah, I have a couple. I've been going about taking pictures of the mess that Circle have left up to cut the trees because some of the places are in quite dangerous condition. Down by Heath Court, if you walk along the river opposite the car park, there's branches across the pavement, and I'm going to report all that to Circle. Okay. It does concern me a bit. I know it's not our business. No, I was gonna, are there any trees on our land that are noted as a concern, or is it just the Circo Brackland ones? It's just the ones that have been cutting down the trees. I haven't seen anything else regarding our trees. Okay, cool, thank you. Noted. Um, anything, Stephen, from yourself on health and safety? <coughs> no. Easy peasy. Uh, moving on to town team and countryside officers' report. I feel a bit lost without Nick because he normally, <laughs> normally gives us the highlight report and uh, sort of street furniture. You can tell what excites me on street furniture, but, but uh, uh, we'll do it the other way around today then, Stephen. Start with yourself if that's okay, countryside yeah, officer. Right. <coughs> so we've just um, been working on the uh, common with uh, the volunteers. So we've finished removing our uh, horse and broom for this year. So the cut material then has been disposed of as small controlled bonfires. Um, in total, we've sort of cleared a quarter of a hectare, which is a third of a football pitch. So when we start with the volunteers in October until the end of February, that's how much we've cleared. So it's been pretty good going. We've also been doing our tree plant and maintenance at Nunnery Lane and Barn Cross Common. And there's um, the total there for the, the equivalent of um, wages. Uh, the grazing, sheep are grazing both sides of the common at present. Castle Park, we should be okay to graze under the ED4 prescription that the Rural Payments Agency have confirmed today, so we should be okay to move along with that. Uh, tree Safety Works, uh, Norfolk Trees have begun um, and they're still ongoing, so hopefully it's be completed within the next two weeks. We had a meeting with Matt from TreeWorks who conducted the survey of all the Fecker Town Council trees and provide the work schedules for trees that require the attention. So having reviewed the rolling contract, this has been extended for this year, 2022. Uh, the recent storms, few trees down, these have been cleaned up with a combination of Circo, Mill Lane, Nunnery Lane area, and our cells of a fallen tree at Main Street. Uh, Graham and myself was able to attend to this and able to tidy and make good. The feather edging on the uh, fence panel that was sli slightly damaged when that come down. So there's just a picture on the left there. And also there's a tree on the right from Barnum Camp. So I've been in contact with Honington about um, clearing this. They are aware of it, so hopefully they will be able to clear it and there won't be too much damage done to that fence line there. 
Uh, the fish pass, unfortunately, Ellis has been in contact just this week to inform us that this project has been refused. Senior manager sign off due to the programmed overrun into the 22, 23 year from the tender received. He also mentioned there is no um, fund allocated to this project in the following year and is very unlikely to receive funding beyond due to increasingly tight budget following spending review at the EA. So Tina and myself have a meeting scheduled for the 7th to discuss what the next plan of action could possibly be during, uh, regarding the fish parts. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any questions, please? Nope, quite happy. Uh, got a couple from myself. Um, firstly, uh, we've spoken in the past about the epicormic growth on the trees on Castle Street, and I'm very grateful to Stephen and Nick for liaising with um, ID Verdi to get, uh, well, it must be about 10 trees at least, cut back. Um, and as you drive up Castle Street, the view of Castle Hill and uh, Castle Park has improved significantly uh, as you drive up there. So I'm really pleased about that. So I'm very grateful. <coughs> um, there's a few trees, it appears, that are not part of the ID Verdi contract. There's one on the Melford Common side of Castle Street, particularly, which is um, on the sort of edge of a junction there. And the few at the top near the car park. Um, I'm not actually sure if there even are, are trees or whether they're Breckland trees. Um, but it would make sense to, to get those tidied up as well. So if they are Brecklands, then I'm quite happy to have a chat with them about that, um, to sort of finish them off. Um, the other thing is about uh, tree guards for some of the trees, um, particularly I've noticed on St Barnabas and on uh, Castle Park, um, where trees have um, not taken and essentially died. Um, there are sort of quite a lot of loose tree guards and obviously with the storms that a lot of them have been blowing around and I know you guys regularly pick them up and um, somebody said to me recently what should we do if we spot the tree guards blowing away because they can be reused presumably so yeah. is there any sort of advice for people on where to take them what to do with them there was one in a road down Melford Common the other week <laughs> <laughs> should they bring them to the Carnegie should they probably the best place to be up the yard at cemetery okay Five in my garage for you. So. <laughs> 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 take them to me. No, well, I, you know, I can't. I hate them anyway because I think they're ugly. But um, mm. uh, I mean, they serve a purpose. Yeah. But when they're blowing around, and several of them have been shredded by the the mowers, so um, you know, shredded plastic's not good. But um, I will let people know that because I am often asked by dog walkers where to take them. Okay. I'm going to take Stuart first, Dennis, and then yeah, yourself. So Stuart, please. Thanks, Jay. I'm just a. Uh, in terms of the economic growth, I have had some feedback to say that it is nice to be able to see through to the Castle Park from the road, but it's also a safety issue as well, where cars are trying to pull out um, if it can be managed. Um, uh, it's something that you know I think if we can put it on our schedule of jobs to do each year um, and maintain it rather than having uh, us yeah. prompt the officers. Um, it is actually part of the ID Verdi contract um, and there's dates in there specified when it must be done and um, so it's more a case of remembering to, to make sure they do it basically but now that um, has been established because it's still a relatively new contract. Um, well they do have time scales to adhere to don't they so I think yeah. within that time scale on this occasion and then extra ones we are meeting um, Steve from Breckland next week so maybe bring it to his attention yeah that'd be great if we could because the certainly the one on the junction there is uh, particularly bad is the biggest Dennis please yeah um, on, on where we're losing trees from you know with the die off if they're not taking uh, and everything are we replacing those they have been replaced in the past yeah oh, okay. we will get, and what well, if, if they have been replaced and they do die again it's probably best not to replace them again because obviously yeah. they're not going to take that will leave gaps in our Hedges and stuff, won't it? Um, in the, yeah. the ones we have sort of seen that have died, there's been a clump of them in a certain area, mm -hmm. but on the under trees. So the ones that are actually in line of the hedgerows seem to be all right. surviving. Yeah. And they're only ones and twos, so when the hedgerow gets away, and then we can come back and gap up, yeah, gap so up. you can actually see clearly where. And what the percentage lines are. are we losing approximately? Um, it varies mm -hmm. in the areas. Yeah. So, just for example, Barnum Cross, they're pretty much all going well. Good. Um, Mill Lane, all going well because out in the open, we've got some decent 
growing medium there, mm. decent sunlight. It's just the ones that have been sort of put under the and tree the canopies yeah. and right. they're the ones that are struggling really. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dennis. Any other questions on countryside? Nope. Um, are you taking us through Nick's report or is she just all dropping to whisper it? Do you want to put Bruce? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I assume Nick's got a better offer today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure where he's but... Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, he just passes apologies over. He's taking some well-earned leave, I believe. Oh, uh, okay, that's fine. I think it's still from Christmas. <laughs> on, that, on that case, we'll let him off. <laughs> um, uh, well, obviously, we had the report circulated. Um, I know they've been doing some further work on street furniture, and there's been some conversations with Breckland mm -hmm. about upgrading the size of the litter bins along the river corridor. Um, uh, initially, Breckland said no to them funding the upgrade, even though they are their bins. Um, there's a meeting tomorrow of Breckland councillors for Fetford uh, to talk about MTI funding. Um, and it's on the list to potentially pay for the bins to be upgraded using MTI money. Uh, so we're quite uh, quite excited about that, that it's not a dead duck, it's you know potential to be um, taken forward. Uh, they've completed all of the uh, Heritage Trail roundels, and you've seen them around town. And funny enough, I was walking along the river last week, um, and I saw some tourists, because I spoke to them. They weren't from Fetford, and they were reading one of the lecterns, which was uh, really good to see that they are actually being used. Uh, Thomas Paine statue, uh, I know that um, Nick's done some further work on that and uh, awaiting uh, the quotes, which always takes a bit of time. And I know Nick's met with uh, a couple of other companies about the flower beds uh, with a view to taking them uh, over. And again, there is an agenda item tomorrow for some MTI money to potentially to be used to upgrade some of those uh, flower beds. Uh, public toilets. Um, just see what, the thing I really wanted to pick out of there, I think it's at the bottom. So we discussed last month about local bus companies being given um, their own key essentially to access the toilets outside of the core hours uh, and that's been arranged um, and the local bus companies are very happy with the outcome uh, and they'd like to thank the town council for their efforts in getting that in place so really pleased about that, I think that's a, a good outcome and uh, thanks to Nick and the team for sorting that out. Any questions on street furniture? Uh, Town team report. Dave, please. Yeah, thank you, um, a comment, really. Is, uh, I met Jean May, who some of you will know. She was um, mayor probably over 20 years ago. Um, and uh, she doesn't, she, she's 94 now, and she hasn't, and she's very bravely pushing her trolley up, and, up, the, uh, up King Street. But she, she hasn't been out much uh, over the pandemic and she just said how pleased she was when she came around the corner and saw the golden statues <laughs> that were bright. And she had no idea that had been done and so it was a real big surprise for her and a pleasant surprise. So just passing on her thanks for the work that's done on that. Noted. Liberace's masterpiece, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Uh, Stuart, please. It's not an agenda, but it is a town, I presume it's a town team thing. I'm just thinking about the... The winding up of Prince Peter's clock um, is forever above there. People say, oh, you can't even get the time right in the town. And I know that it used to be scheduled for a weekly wind up. Um, it seems to have dropped off the uh, priority list. So I don't know if we can minute that and ask Alan to uh, put that on the next schedule. Um, we did talk about, and uh, Ros did obtain quotations for automating it in the same way that the Guildford clock is automated, and that was of the magnitude of about £2,000 to do that. Um, so that's obviously a an option, but in the short term, it would be nice if we could just wind the clock up once a week and uh, um, take a little bit of uh, earache away from me. From the <laughs> people who can't even get the time. It's right twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Stuart. Uh, anybody else, please? No, thank you. Um, before I move on from town team and countryside uh, officers' report. Um, I'm conscious that we've got uh, Thetford River Group with us today, welcome. Is there anything particularly you wanted to comment on on the uh, agenda? We don't have a public forum or public questions, but I know you are keen about the fish pass, so um, I suspect if, out of anything that would be the one you wanted to comment on, but it's entirely up to you, you don't have yeah, to. Yeah, we, we just want to say, um, you know, maybe um, this is appropriate for the Windward for everybody, but perhaps not everybody in the town. 
I'm aware that this is a recording, but um, you know, probably this is the best solution. I think, particularly to say hello to Stephen. When we all began the long journey of the fish pass, it was after two years of really, really full on drought and there was no water. And it's a very different picture now where we've had quite a lot of flooding and things like that. You know, just turning it around to be quite different. Um, so, you know, perhaps this is the solution we're all looking for. It certainly saves everybody a lot of money. Lovely. Thank you. Okay, moving on to 789 financial report update to receive the amenities financial report for the 11 months ended the 28th of February. Uh, anything to add, Alan, to what's on the report? I think it's just, um, in terms of overall budgetary control, it has been quite a difficult year. Uh, there are significant variances up and down. Um, and I think it's just to be conscious of that. For example, on the Christmas, there will be some money coming out of the pay box reserve to balance off the pay box uh, over expenditure. Uh, we made a decision on the Christmas lights that if there was a debt, you know, if overall the council had a deficit, we'd fund that from reserves. So it's quite difficult to really draw conclusions, but we have been trying to kind of adhere to the budget to the extent possible. Uh, and so we are deferring certain things, reaching things that, uh, until next year. But overall, it's, you know, we're hoping at, at a council level, it, the budget will be funded. But at the individual level, uh, uh, we just have to be very conscious of those under no expense. Okay. Noted. Dave, please. Um, just on the grants received uh, line, uh, we think about £10,000 shortfall there. And uh, there's a comment, it sounds like any further grants will be received. I'm assuming that's just for this year, is it? Just for this year, okay. yes. <laughs> but also, uh, we seem to have been expecting £10,000 more grants than we actually got. I just wondered what the reason for the shortfall was there. I think in previous years we have we've had a number of grants come in. We've had sections at one hundred seven money that that's come in, and uh, none of that has come in this year. So I'm not sure whether we still have to do an application for it. But we haven't received. We've only received money from HLF, whereas previously we've received right. money from HLF and Breckland Council. So it's just a matter of just trying to understand that. Okay. Right. So we'll have, so we'll have more news on that. I will have to do this part of before my close of the hearing. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? No? I mean, personally, uh, uh, I never like to see a, a big variance. However, there are three, as you mentioned, three unexpected areas of expenditure which have been long, you know, building up for a while, frankly, Christmas lights in particular. Um, and um, play parks. I mean, the health and safety repairs to the play parks. Um, you know, were, were absolutely crucial. So, uh, if there is going to be a variance, it's for a good reason. So, I, I don't mind too much. Uh, and that's what I shall say if anyone asks me at full council. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Noted. Um, moving on to 790 projects draft budget. From an immediate perspective, we've just done this at, a, at an overall council level. We haven't done it by committee. Uh, and there has been no change from the document that was tabled at the last meeting. There might have been some clarification on some of the explanations. I think I duplicated some of the explanations, but that's all that, that, that has happened there. Yeah. So could you just confirm, because that's, I mean, the, the draft um, projects budget is uh, for the whole council. Which ones particularly relate to amenities? Um, if you have a look at the um, uh, open space reserves, so halfway down, you'll see that there's Nuns Bridges, there's Barn Cross car park phase two, the sculpture trail, yep. and the Thomas Payne plinth. Um, I'm not too sure whether the, the NCC uh, parish partnerships come out of that or whether that's planning. And uh, play park renewal would come out um, of, that would be an amenities budget item. Okay. And you'll see we've set aside quite a bit of money because we understand we're gonna to have to do some refurbishments there. Lovely, thank you. It's useful, just so we're clear. I have been accused of bias by giving amenities more than any other committee, but... Because <laughs> we do lots of work. <laughs> just so, so I also have to defend myself at council. <laughs> no, that's, that's why I wanted to check, because um, uh, I think some of us were pleasantly surprised last month that there was more in the project pot than we thought. Um, but uh, as long as that's been confirmed now, um, that gives us a good uh, basis to work to. Um, I can give you two updates on that. Um, one, this the MTI meeting tomorrow 
the um, one of the proposals is to match fund the sculpture trail. Uh, seeing as we've got ten thousand pounds set aside, there is a proposal to um, also have ten thousand pounds of MTI money, which would mean that we'd be able to deliver that, which I think is really encouraging. And the other thing about the NCC Parish Partnership, uh, this is for the pathway along um, Nuns Bridges, so this current year's bid for the next financial year. Uh, that is being debated by Norfolk's Cabinet on Monday, and our application is on the list recommended for approval. Brilliant. So, uh, again, should that be approved on Monday, as it probably will be, then that's all confirmed as well. So it's a £30,000 project on its own. Okay. Oh, sorry, sure. sure. Because obviously, given that the, the fish pass is issued, is now up there running, as part of the path design, obviously that will have to be incorporated within there, but presumably if we get the, the money, we can look at the detailed design and elevate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I would have hoped that the fish pass could be resolved and done before we worry too much about the path pathways in the immediate area. But I don't think it's going to tally up that way. So we, we're going to, we're going to have to think about how it all works together. And the other thing we're going to have to consider is the pipeway project because we don't want to be putting a pathway in and then they put loads of diggers over it to put the new electricity <laughs> cable. I'm being cynical now, but you, do you know what I mean? It's sort of, that's exactly where the path the pipe is going to go. Um, so we might want to put that particular pathway on the back burner, um, even once the money's confirmed, just so we make sure that uh, we're not duplicating work. Can we resolve to approve the? Yep, our members happy to uh, note and approve the two finance documents that Alan's presented. Thank you very much. Seven nine one update on front garden competition. Um, you'll be aware that we. Uh, updated and approved a sort of schedule, if you like, last year about this. Um, so uh, Chris and I were able to meet with uh, Tina and Alan and Nick and Stephen um, and David on Monday, which was really encouraging. Um, and the officers are now going to put the necessary in place to start promoting the front garden competition um, and encouraging uh, people to either self-nominate or nominate neighbours. Uh, and be clear on what the criteria is. I think I saw an email from Tina that went to everybody this week um, where councillors are encouraged to um, basically encourage residents in their area to, to get involved. And there'll be some posters produced uh, relatively quickly by uh, the team at the Carnegie uh, so we can get that out and about. Um, and then the awards ceremony will be in August and the plan is to have it in King's House Gardens um, and sort of do a sort of afternoon tea type arrangement for the finalists. Uh, so really pleased that that's going ahead. We need to find some sponsors to pay for the prizes. Uh, so there's some conversations going on. So if anybody knows anybody that might want to uh, sponsor a particular category, then do let us know. But um, given the efforts we're making this year with the hanging baskets and the planters, particularly with our Jubilee theme, uh, it's nice that we're able to introduce the front garden competition at the same time and make a really big effort this year. Does anyone have any questions on that? Can I just say, <coughs> sorry, yep. Uh, there's a letter that uh, Tina's drafted for councillors. If you want for sponsorships, just the process to do that. Uh, if you'd like, I'll leave them. I have them here. I'll hand them out at the end of the meeting. Uh, if you want electronic versions or more copies, please uh, don't hesitate to contact us. Brilliant, appreciate that. Is there any update, Alan, when we might have some posters? Is that next week, probably? I have to, but I, that's fine. I can't answer your question, sorry. No, that's okay. But they're, they're imminent. <coughs> yeah. She's encouraging. Okay. Moving on to 792, approval of small grants. We've got one application to review today, uh, which has been through the assessment process. <coughs> Anything you wanted to add on that one, Alan? I uh, know, there's just one minor um, compliance issue that we can follow up. Yeah. Uh, is that the confirmation of signatories? Uh, uh, the constitution has been signed. Okay. That also just has to be done, and the confirmation of signatories. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Any questions from members on the application? I mean, we have um, supported Fetford Music Project in the past. They're a very good local charity. They do a lot of good work. Dennis. Uh, on that, uh, on, uh, if I read the full on right, they said they never had a grant from us in the past, yes. and I, I, I'm certainly certain that they had a grant from us in the past. He said no on their form, if I read it right. Yeah. 
I think it's within the last 12 months because they're only allowed one grant every year. Yeah. Okay. And it's the same for everybody. But yeah. I mean, they've but certainly not had one in the last. Yeah. Have you had a grant? Apart? I mean, I was fully support this yeah. thing, but I just thought that on there that's uh, a little bit of it here and there. Is that right, Alan? Is that essentially what that question is asking, if they've ever had it a grant? Is, it does actually ask the debt. Have you ever had a grant? Yeah. And they said no, and I'm fairly certain I've voted for them to have a grant before. Mm. Mm, sorry. <laughs> no, it's a good question, Dylan. I think I, I interpret that as, have you had a grant in the last 12 months? But, say but yes. um, so we might need to amend that slightly just to be clear. Um, I mean, if we want to know if they've ever had a grant, that's useful. But in terms of eligibility, just because they've had one in the past, um, mm-hmm. once upon a time, I can't remember when it was, but you're right, it was years yeah. ago. <laughs> yeah, it was years ago, and, and you voted for it. Too, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Stuart. I think uh, <laughs> that may have evolved from when we also wanted to know if they'd had it before, so we could look in our records to see that we've got a constitution and we had all that, so we didn't have to duplicate all the, the information. Now. So I think that may have come from that um, as a question before. Um, so we might want to just reword it or understand why we need the in that way. Yeah. Phrasing it in like the last three years or something so that you know that you've got the documentation on hand and then they don't have to provide it. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay, can I have a proposer and a seconder to adopt this? Dennis I proposal. Propose that we the ground. And Chris is seconded. Chris, yeah. All those in favour? Thank you very much, Kerry. Um, while we're on small grants, Alan, are there any applications that you've received and are currently being processed? There is one. There is one. I was hoping that there would be about three this month, but uh, fortunately people have looked at the criteria and have decided against submitting a grant. Okay. Any particular aspect of the criteria that's put them off? Uh, one was was really a sponsorship. It was to sponsor someone um, An in, individual. in a sport activity um, so that was really it. it was an individual rather than a, okay. a greater community project that's fine um good so i mean we're well within budget for small grants this year mm. and presumably from uh, our april meeting will be um the pot will be reset as it were and we can debate next year's applications Correct. so i do encourage members if you are aware of any voluntary community groups in fetford um it's up to 300 pounds uh, they have to have a bank account. They have to have a signed constitution. Um, other than that, what the rule? That's, it. that's pretty much it. So do do promote it, is what I'm saying. If, if by some miracle we don't spend it, and we seem to look like we're not going to be able to spend it all, are we carrying that over to next <laughs> year? Um, Alan tells me that at our April meeting, we can have a discussion about what underspends we carry forward. Carry forward. Um, but I would counter that and say we are overspent in a number of areas oh, sorry, yes. <laughs> and we might need the money <laughs> but that's a decision for the committee to take in April okay. but, uh, you, I asked the same question <laughs> no, <all right. laughs> good, thank you uh, 793 approval of event application to review an application for the wild swimming event uh, this event is scheduled for the 21st of August. It's a small scale event in that it's not uh, just open to the public, it's actually to help uh, special needs children. Uh, they do them in small groups of six or seven and they just do it over a day. Uh, they have provided the information. Uh, I need to sit down with Stephen uh, just to clarify, but I thought if we could get a decision in principle, then we'd move forward. They don't need any other event, uh, any other licensing for Breckland, for example, because it's not that type of event. So it's really just from a nine, hoppers nine to hoppers four. And it's small groups of children, especially these children, they have volunteers and everything else in there. Just give them a treat by leaving them swim in the river. Great. Um, members are content that, sort of in principle, we agree with that, subject to the usual Absolutely. rules? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Easy peasy. They've just asked that the, the part of the car park be closed yeah. off and if they, if they can control, control the grazing. That type of figure, that's what I need to speak to Stephen. Okay, about. so it's all okay. joined up. Uh, I will say it's um, sort of open water swimming has become really popular the last sort of 12 months. I see re- people regularly. My neighbour goes down pretty much every day to the river. Well <laughs> uh, okay. 
So I'm going to take us back to action points and updates now before we move on to complaints and compliments. And I just want to, because our, our list is forever growing, and I just want to whiz through them. Um, and if there are any that are complete, to take them off, essentially, and to make sure the committee are content that we've um, dealt with them. Uh, so the first one there is to discover who owns land on where the Thomas Paine statue stands. That was uh, uh, Dennis raised that point. Um, I don't think Nick categorically has... Um, confirm that and is still looking into that is that what he has managed to do is speak to Norfolk County Council and Breckland and, and confirm that they don't own it okay. it's whether it's owned by Stanley Forth or it's owned by the town council okay. that's the last bit of this could have work brilliant well uh, if it's not owned by Breckland or Norfolk it's either Stanley Forth or town or it will be Stanley Forth or town because we're the only other players so that mean I can claim it now? <laughs> <laughs> yes as long as you maintain it <laughs> Yeah, right, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we'll leave that one on there until uh, hopefully next month Nick can confirm categorically what the score is. The second one is to prepare a report for the press on the environmental benefit of grazing on Barnum Common and Castle Park, and the status is to be completed when grazing has been organised for Castle Park. Have we got a month in mind for that, Stim? Because I'm, mm. we're, we're we're getting close to now. Now that we've got the um, you know the license thingy confirmed. Yeah, hopefully in March. <laughs> okay. So if I put March, and then when we review this in April, we'll be clear on hopefully. where we're at with that. Thank you. Uh, third, to quantify the costs for the renewal of the play areas and to prepare an annual funding plan. Uh, status is its longer term project <coughs> coordinating with the finance officer. Has there been any progress on that one, Alan? Not at the moment. I think the team have been focusing on getting those uh, health and safety repairs done. Yep. I think they've virtually done, and then we look at that as a second phase. Okay. Fourth, to obtain a quotation for enhancing the Thomas Paine inscription panels, and we've touched upon that in the meeting. And um, Stuart, do you know if he's met with some contractors? Or he's, he's, he's met with one. He's got some quote um, conversations with two others, um, which is still wait. So still ongoing. I'm afraid. Okay, situation. that's fine. And then once those quotes have been obtained, you can use that information for the funding bid. Yes. Cool. Next one, to take the grass cutting out of the Fetford Town Council contract. It says ASAP. Where are we at with that one? Bearing in mind we're in March. Um, not too far, I don't believe. I'll have to review all this information. I think this was an uh, organised part before I was uh, here, I believe, was it? Or yes, it was. It was March. Yeah. So. Again, we're meeting with Steve next week, so we might be able to okay. make some progress on that. I'd be quite keen on that one in particular because I'm conscious that we did a big public consultation with about 300 people taking part and we arrived at a decision which was to amend the maintenance regime and the cutting essentially of a number of areas and I think the public would expect to see that acted upon. So um, if we just completely stick to our current cutting regime this year uh, I think people will be you know, disappointed. So. Um, I think it's important we make some progress on that, particularly given it's been so mild and probably due a cut fairly soon. So if you could update next month, that would be really useful. Uh, to obtain a quotation for a red, white and blue colour scheme for the town's planters. Um, I know planters specific are going to be done within the existing contract, aren't they? So could we remove that one? I think Nick is still in the process of talking to Eileen Birdie and um, I'm sure by next month he'll report on it and his own report on it should be complete. Okay. Leave that on or not? Leave that one on, yeah. yeah. See, I'm keen to take him off, but <laughs> Alan, <laughs> Alan wants him still on, which is fine. <laughs> to promote the small grant scheme on the council's social media platforms before March 22 meeting where well, we can definitely take that one off because I know you've done that. We have done it. <laughs> so often yeah. I use those and I've done a, a plug here today so I think that's uh, well covered for the time being. Next to install the final roundels. That's done. There you are, you can take that one off as well Chris. Thank you. To update the finger pointing signage around the town centre <clears throat> to reflect changes. 
and the status of that is owned by Norfolk County Council, therefore we need permission. Um, I have spoken to Jane James about that as the county councillor for the town centre, um, and between the two of us we are going to speak to Norfolk County Council about that. What would be particularly useful, and perhaps an agenda item for next month, would be for us to have a conversation as a committee about what additional signs we would like to add, and then the flip side of that is which ones we want to take off, because certainly one of them referred to the art gallery at the Guildhall. Um, so what other features in the town do we want added? These are the black sort of cast iron signs. So we can, if you all give some thought to that and we can have a, a chat next month. Um, no idea if county will pay for it, but we'll have the conversation. Stuart? In terms of that ownership, are the county saying they're owned in it? Because when a lot of these were put in, it was very much, they might have provided the capital for it but it was under the understanding the legacy would be dealt with by the town council. Um, so what my understanding was everything unfortunately landed on our lap after they initially paid for it, which okay. meant that they were in our um, remit to do what we liked with. Um, but also the flip side is the, the costs were there for us to pick up as well. Um, mm -hmm. So I think my understanding is that with us rather than they may be on county land but I think the yeah. signs itself may be owned by us um, the update that Nick gave either last month or the month before was that they were owned by county whether that's we've established that they bought them and therefore assumed that they own them um, or not but that's worth clarifying mm. that I, I don't suspect they will want to pay to add additional no. signs, <laughs> frankly. So either way, we're going to end up doing it if we want it done. Yeah. Dennis? Yeah, on, on those signs, I mean, they're very useful to the town, I think. But some of them are fairly mobile in that they can be pushed around by, well, members of the public, let's say. And so I think we need to look into a way of fixing them in, in a position more permanent. They are. I think True. Dennis Nick has been working on that and the oh, team, good. and they have secured the majority of those now. Um, albeit some may be pointing in a direction we didn't want to go, but I think they are fixed now. But uh, I know Nick's keen to, to work with us on that. So, following an audit of the posts, I think that's the time to then. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah, no, so they were pointing in all sorts of directions in the past, and it's a mm -hmm. fair point. I like the one at the top of Castle Street that just has one. <laughs> one sign pointing to Castle Hill, which is next door. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind of redundant, but um, uh, you know, we want to make use of them. And actually, it's important for people to be able to navigate around the town centre. So that is uh, useful to, to explore. Although we've spent all of our street furniture budget for this year, so we'll have to wait. Surprise, surprise. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, next one, to prepare an inventory of all street furniture in the town. Um, it says to be completed over the next four months, but I'm not sure when the four months started. Um, <laughs> it was actually six months. Well, was it six January, months? So okay. and we'll, we knock one month off every, every time we do the action point. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, I know that's a longer term thing, but um, in order to put the maintenance programme in place, we need the inventory to work out. I, I mean, I'm more interested in the maintenance of the street furniture than I am of the inventory, but, you know, one leads to the other, but um, we'll leave that one as it is for the time being. Uh, to report back on the engagements with Breckland on bin enlargements along the river corridor, uh, as mentioned, that will be discussed tomorrow and Nick can update us next month. To report back on the toilet cleaning contract review and the addressing of service deficiencies further review after two months has that been covered do you think alan with the work that's happened over the last month or is it best to still leave that on there i think it's best to leave it on there um, um because i think we're going to, have to put it on the agenda okay. to come back to this committee um at some stage okay uh, one at the bottom to take over certain floor displays from breckland cost to be provided to breckland to inform of the work again that one's being discussed tomorrow uh, to obtain updates on the fish pass and whether the Environment Agency will complete the project this year. Status, in, program, in progress, frequent interactions with the Environment Agency. I guess we leave that one on there <laughs> and your down. meeting was it next week. Yeah, so um, we'll know more by next month what the score is with yeah. that. Um, depending on the meeting next week, presumably we'll have a, a plan B if need be for the April meeting. Uh, to consider whether to take on maintenance of school plane, 
waiting for more information from English Heritage. This was the thing we debated last month, which the town clerk was leading on. Uh, any further no. update on that? No, we're still waiting for those costs. Okay. And last, to request to to request Breckland to consider a limited grass cutting regime to promote wildflower areas in the town. Need to propose amenities approved grass cutting reduction. That's duplication. That, I think it's the same no. one. Uh, well, we've exceeded and taken three of them. <laughs> cool. Everybody happy with those updates? I don't propose we'll go through them in that detail every month, but I think it is quite useful to. Dave? I'm going to take three off from my proposal for one. The round doors have been completed, but we did say that we were going to relaunch the heritage plan, so that, should that be an action plan? I mean, it's a separate one, really, it's part of the round doors area. Yeah, I think that's a fair comment. Um, yes, so with a new action to relaunch yeah. the heritage trail. Yeah. I know we're waiting for the yeah. infrastructure to be in place. We are. Um, Chris and I had a meeting in Deerham on Monday of the Breckland Area Museums Committee, and Oliver Boner from the Ancient House was there, and he was talking about the exhibition at the museum this year is, Vi is Vikings, uh -huh. which feature on one of the lecterns. And I mentioned to him that we would love to relaunch the trail in partnership with them and essentially use it as a way of, you know, pushing more people to the museum to look at the exhibition and then equally if they're coming to look at the exhibition they might as well do the trail while they're here. Uh, so I think there is a lot of opportunity there so now that they're all in. Um, I think I did talk to the town clerk about this and she suggested that Katie might be the best person to lead on that. Um, so if we add it as an action and then we can sort of set up a meeting between Oliver and Katie and see what needs to happen. Um, the, the key thing is finding out if there's a map and you know maybe getting some of that reprinted if there is one floating around um but the, the you know the majority of that is on the red heritage map yeah that um, the tourist information have yeah which would need a reprint um, yeah so we need to make a decision about format costing yeah. financing talking and leaving here about distribution yeah. and things like that. so that, that it's a quick decision uh, to be made yeah. but also on the viking aspect there is not the heritage trail, but there is also a Viking trail that oh. the County Council yeah. did many years ago. It's, still and it's online, but yeah. I think that yeah. could be something to launch at the same time, even yeah. if it's just a, a threefold um, thing. Because yeah. so many people don't realise the Viking no. heritage we have, no. and if all the work's been done, um, yeah. it's, it's really like right. doing that uh, and launch that when they launch their exhibition. Mm. Okay. Dennis, please. Now, some of our maps that are in town are considerably out of date and giving false information, especially if you look at the one on the Bell Hotel. There's some um, data on there that is no longer valid. Who's, who, whose responsibility is that? We are. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> we are, Stuart. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, yeah you know, speaking of the converted Dennis, I've been yeah. banging, banging on us for years, you know, especially when the bus station moved, yeah. suddenly they're all wrong, you know, if you want to, <laughs> yeah. Um, I did raise it with Breckland to see if they would be willing to help um, fund the thing. Because all the frames are there, it's yeah. like a matter of reprinting uh, the, the, the inserts, but it's not a, you know, a 50 quid job, you know, these things. But give them the credit, those have stood the test of time, yeah. they have been very graffiti resistant, yeah. vandal resistant, so you know, our proposal would be we look to replace them, but obviously you know, Terry's got a magic wand to, to bring these things to, <laughs> to refinance it, but you know, you're talking quite a lot of money for each and yeah. you have a number of them. Yeah. Uh, the idea, you know, tourist information is not in, in the wrong place as well, and the idea of putting stickers on there, you know, I've discussed it and, no. and might be... It just doesn't look right, and it you know, detracts from the um, thing. So I think there is a big piece of work to do there, Dennis, yeah. um, and to find a, a funding pot to do it. I'd hate to do away with them, because they are oh, no, well-received and you know, very useful to you know, give people information when they are there. But is that something we can put down on as a... As a <laughs> an extra to-do <laughs> list. Um, <laughs> we're taking <laughs> because away all your I think we wins. need to look at the costs of doing it to, to ascertain where we go for funding. But, no, I agree. Uh, um, so I'm sorry to break one off. <laughs> no, it's fine. We'll, we'll park that there for a second. Dennis. Just a, a quick comment. Yeah, they, they are very helpful. I mean, me being a busybody I am, I pick up tourists and show them things and, and take them around. I love 
talking about Thetford, you may have noticed. And I do use them, as, you know, to show people where to go and everything, but then I have to explain this is not correct and this is not correct anymore. So don't get rid of them, please. Let's up again. No, that's fine. I think one of the reasons we need to do the inventory is because... Um, we own so many different bits of street furniture, yeah. and I don't think we're fully aware of just how many we own as a town council. So let's get the inventory done first. Um, uh, with, but with all of these things, actually the real cost is the design work and you know, sort of working out what you need to put on, and that, that, that's where the cost. The print is relatively cheap. Um, but we'll put it down as a sort of future project. Um, let's focus, seeing as we've just spent you know, over a thousand pounds putting the rain, roundels and the lecterns together, let's get that trail launched first. Um, and you know, seeing as the, I think the Viking exhibition starts in June, so that gives us time to, to get on with that. Um, and by which point we'll be completing the inventory and we can properly cost up what else we want to do. Um, but uh, you know, we've made some good progress with street furniture, but. Um, we do own more than we think, frankly. So, Dave's suggestion was to add on, uh, relaunch the Heritage Trail. Is that right, Dave? Yeah. Okay. So we'll take the three off and put one on, Chris, okay? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay, anything else on action points and updates? No, as I said, I won't go through it every month like that, but I think every so often it's useful just to track progress and see where we're at. Um, we are a busy committee and there's, you know, lots of different aspects, so try and keep on top of them all. Okay, uh, back to the agenda as was, 794, compliments and complaints, anything to note? I think we'll ask. No. Um, uh, other than the sort of informal compliment that Dave mentioned from Jean Hay, which is uh, always appreciated. 795, correspondence to note and discuss correspondence received. None. 796, committee officers update to update any information since the agenda was released. No. <coughs> Community engagement to discuss and agree any consultation or media release required. Um, well, I'm assuming there will be a press release drafted about the front garden competition at some point once we've got the posters for that. Any other media releases or information people want shared? You've mentioned the um, grazing one, which is something that yeah. can come in. Mm. Lovely. So at 2.47, meeting closed. Thank you all very much. Well done, <laughs>